In this discussion video, we will talk about an epsilon delta proof for a 1 over x function. So the problem is to prove the limit as x approaches 1 half of 1 over x equals 2 using epsilon delta. So first, pause it for 8 minutes to try this. 4, 3, 2, 1, pause it for 8 minutes and try this question on your own first. All right, so hopefully you did that. Hopefully you paused it for 8 minutes. If not, I really encourage you to do that. That's going to be super important with these more challenging epsilon delta questions. All right, so let's begin with some scratch work. So in the scratch work, let's let let's let epsilon be greater than zero. We want to find a number delta that's greater than zero such that if 0 is less than the absolute value of x minus a, so in this case my a is 1 half, x minus 1 half is less than delta, then the absolute value, absolute value of f of x minus the limit l, we want that. So f of x is 1 over x minus, and the limit is 2, we want that to be less than epsilon. Okay, so I usually like to set up what it is that I'm trying to find uh, in my scratch work here. I'm trying to find this number delta that makes this next part work. And we begin this by working with the epsilon inequality. So working backwards, 1 over x minus 2 is less than epsilon. And we want to work with it until it looks more like the delta inequality. So it almost looks like, you know, I, I can sort of reciprocal I can reciprocal this, and that would make it x minus a half. Unfortunately, that doesn't work. You know, if I have two terms like this, I can't just like reciprocal it to make it look like x minus one half. So let's try to simplify. So I have one over x minus two. Let's get a common denominator. One over x minus two x over x is less than epsilon. Now I can combine these. One minus two x over x in absolute value is less than epsilon. All right, so my numerator, to make it become like x minus a half, I'm going to factor out a negative 2. Then the negative 2x will become x, and the 1 will become minus 1 half. There's that x minus 1 half I needed. And then over x, this is going to be less than epsilon. And now I'm going to split up this into pieces. One of them is going to be x minus a half. Then this negative, I'll put it in its own thing, negative 1. And then I'll also have 2 over x in an absolute value. And I want that to be less than epsilon. And I know that absolute value of negative 1, I, I know that that is just 1. OK. So I need to be able to isolate absolute value of x minus a half. I can't just divide the absolute value of 2 over x over and just say that's delta because my delta can't have an x in it. So instead, I'm going to try to do something similar to what we did with quadratic functions. It would be really nice if where the 2 over x is, if I could replace this with a number. So what we want, so just shifting that over a little bit, we want our absolute value of x minus a half times absolute value of 2 over x we want this to be less than absolute value of x minus a half times some number m. So we're, we're hoped to replace absolute value of 2 over x with some number m that's bigger than it. And we want that to be less than epsilon. Because ultimately, I want this whole thing to be less than epsilon. And if I can set this up, then I'll be able to divide the m over to where the epsilon is and get something that doesn't have any x's in it. Okay. All right, so that is one kind of key idea. The other key idea is, as we did with quadratic functions, we can use the fact that x needs to be getting pretty close to 1 half. So we, have, we get to pick this number delta. So let's just arbitrarily say delta is going to be less than or equal to. And with quadratics, we've said oh, less than or equal to 1. Turns out that won't quite work in this example, and we'll see why in a bit. But for right now, let me just put a box. 
or what number is going to go there. But we're going to do this to help us find m. To find this number m such that we want the absolute value of 2 over x to be less than m. So let's draw a picture to help us visualize what that m is going to be. All right, so first, what if we were to just let delta be less than or equal to 1? Let's look at why this isn't going to work. So I am going to want to draw my function. Let's start off with 2 over x, and then we'll put the absolute values on it. So let me draw some axes. So some axes. OK, and actually, let me draw this one a little bit lower. OK, so the graph of 2 over x is really similar to the graph of 1 over x. The 2 on the top just stretches it vertically by a factor of 2. But overall, it's the same kind of rough general shape. There's a piece here, and there's a piece here. When I take the absolute value of the whole thing now, it's going to take any part of the graph that's below the x-axis like this and flip it across the x-axis to make the y values positive. So that'll make it look like that. And my x values are getting really close to 1 half. And if I plug 1 half into this, the y value is 2. In fact, that's what I'm trying to show the limit is, that the limit is 2. So if I plug 1 half into this function, 2 divided by 1 half is going to be 4. Uh, whoops. So that is going to be 4. And if delta is less than or equal to 1, I can go up to 1 unit to the, uh, to the right. That will put me at 3 halves. And up to 1 unit to the left, that will put me at negative 1 halves. And if I work with that part of the function, I'll get a hole here and sh 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 hole here. But in between those two holes, Notice that my function get, can get really, really big here, really, really big. Even over here, really, really big. It gets infinitely big. But we don't want that. We want to be able to find a number m such that this absolute value of our function will be less than m on whatever interval that I'm talking about. But I can't do that if I pick this for my delta. So here, our function gets too big. Okay, so that's why this value is not going to work. So the specific reason that happens is if I pick 1 as my delta value, I end up crossing this vertical asymptote. And that lets me, that includes this part of the graph where the function goes off to infinity. I need to pick delta small enough so that doesn't happen. So let's let delta be uh, less than or equal to 1 fourth. Because if I go 1 fourth in this direction, that takes me to 1 over 4 here. If I go 1 fourth in the other direction, to the right, that puts me at 3 fourths. OK, and if I look at this portion of the graph, so let's draw a hole here. And at 3 fourths, let's make our epsilon window. OK, now that epsilon window does not go off to infinity. There's sort of an upper limit on how big it is. If I plug 1 fourth into this function, that y value will be 8. If I plug 3 fourths into it, it turns out that y value will be 8 thirds after I simplify it. So if delta is less than or equal to 1 fourth, absolute value of 2 over x is less than 8. All right, so in my chain of inequalities, the absolute value of x minus 2 times absolute value of 2 over x, this will end up being less than absolute value of x minus 2 times the second absolute value is less than 8. OK, and we will want this to be less than epsilon. So from this inequality, we'll get absolute value of x minus 2 is less than epsilon over 8. So overall, there's two things that we need about delta. We need, one, that delta is less than or equal to 1 fourth. And two, we will need delta to be less than or equal to epsilon over 8. And the way we can guarantee that is to let delta be the minimum of the two, the minimum of 1 fourth, and epsilon over 8, the smaller of the two. That will guarantee that delta is less than or equal to both of those. All right, so we are ready for the proof now. OK, so for the proof, we started off by writing given epsilon is greater than 0, we will pick our delta to be the minimum of 1 fourth and epsilon over 8. And then we say if 
zero is less than the absolute value of x minus a, which is a half here, is less than delta, then we want to consider, we want to consider the absolute value of our function, which was one over x, and then minus what the limit should be, which was two, and we're hoping that this absolute value will be less than epsilon. So we are gonna simplify this. We can get a common denominator and we'll get one minus two x over x. Let's factor a negative two out of the top and be left with x minus a half all over x. And now we can split up this absolute value into absolute value of x minus a half times the absolute value of negative one times the absolute value of two over x. So we have split that up. Okay, and this is absolute value of x minus a half times the absolute value of two over x. Alrighty, so let's deal with the absolute value of two over x. So we can deal with that using the fact that delta is the minimum of these two things. This will mean that delta is less than or equal to both of these numbers. Let's use the fact that it's less than or equal to one fourth. That's gonna mean absolute value of x minus one half is less than one fourth. And if I get rid of those absolute values, we get x minus a half is gonna be in between negative one fourth and po oh, oops, less than, less than positive one fourth. Now let's do some algebra. Let's do the same thing to each part of this chain of inequalities to make the middle look like two over x. So let's add a half to everything. Let's add a half, add a half, add a half. So that'll give us one quarter is less than x, is less than three quarters. Now let's reciprocal everything. So as an example, if I had something like three is less than five, and I reciprocal both of these to get one third and then one fifth. Notice that one fifth is smaller. So the inequality gets flipped. And that's gonna work as long as my numbers are positive and my whole range of, of numbers here are, are all positive numbers. So that's gonna flip my inequalities and I'll get four thirds here and four here. All right, I'm almost there. Let's multiply everything by two. So times two, times two, times two. That gives us eight is greater than two over x, is greater than eight thirds. Now I gotta put an absolute value on this, absolute value of two over x. But this whole range of values is positive, so it just stays the same. Okay, so now I'm gonna get to use this. I'm gonna replace absolute value of two over x with eight, and when we do that, we get an inequality. This is less than absolute value of x minus a half times eight. For the absolute value of x minus one half, let's use the fact that that is less than delta. So this is gonna be less than delta times eight. Okay, now I gotta deal with the delta. That's gonna come from what delta was and using the other part of the min, delta, delta is gonna be less than or equal to epsilon over eight. Maybe let's put all of this work in a little bubble. Put that all in a little bubble. Okay, delta is less than or equal to epsilon over eight. So that'll make this whole thing less than or equal to epsilon over eight times eight. And that is what we like to see. The eights cancel and we get epsilon. So we've shown that this absolute value is less than epsilon. Therefore, the limit that we wanted the limit as x approaches two of one over x, sorry, it was as x approaches one half of one over x, this does equal two. I put my rectangle, shade it in to indicate I'm done with the proof.